What's going on guys? It's the Bag of Tricks here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 mistakes that you should avoid the next time you go to buy ski gear. But before this video gets started, while you're out there buying this new ski gear, maybe it would be a good time to check out the web store down below and get either the Pretzel King shirt available in black and white or the Everyday is a Bluebird long sleeve shirt. Both of these are available now. We also have a ton of different stickers in both black and white, and we have the Bob Beanie in both black and white. All kinds of stuff in stock now. Check it out down below or right in one of these corners and help support the channel. Pick up some merch. It would mean the world to me. I make it all right here behind me. I appreciate every single purchase there. So I wanted to make this video before the season started to hopefully prevent you guys from making these mistakes and help you save some money this year as well as in the future. If I didn't make this video fast enough and you made one of these mistakes, leave a comment down below which one did you mess up on and hey, Maybe by leaving that comment and watching this video, you will never make that mistake again. All right, so let's hop into the list at number one. This is going to be ignoring the used ski gear market when you go to buy something new for you. If you are a beginner who's just looking to upgrade from renting every single time you go to having your own set of skis, or you're a parent purchasing stuff for your kids that you know they're gonna outgrow, or if you're somebody like me and you already have a really nice set of skis but you want like a secondary, more specific one, you just don't wanna break the bank. And I'm sure there's many other scenarios out there that I'm forgetting. These are all perfect times to look into the used ski gear market. Anytime is a perfect time to look at used ski gear. There's so many skiers out there selling stuff that's lightly used in great condition and that would be perfect for you that it would be foolish to ignore that altogether and just go straight straight for the brand new stuff. I have started both my ski life and snowboarding life with completely used setups and I've purchased all types of other used stuff such as coats, pants, goggles, gloves, outerwear, all kinds of stuff and I've never been let down and I've saved so much money. So don't make the mistake of not looking into used ski gear first. Point number two is not going to a boot fitter before you get your boots, whether those boots are used, whether they're new, going to a boot fitter is going to help you find the boots that are perfect for your foot shape and your body. There's nothing worse than skiing in boots that hurt, and there's no mistake that I see happen more often than people buying a set of boots before they try it on or without the guidance of a professional. I've made this mistake myself and I wasted 400 plus dollars on boots that sucked for me. A bunch of other people I know have made a similar mistake. So, whether you're planning to buy used boots, Boots or brand new boots, first go to a boot fitter that can tell you what size boot you need, what width shell you need, what brands fit you the best, what you should look for, what you should completely avoid. And if you're gonna go with a new boot, they can also custom mold this boot to your foot and make it fit perfect. So don't make the mistake of buying boots which are very expensive without having a professional help you decide which boot is right for you. Mistake number three, we're moving into the outerwear and this is prioritizing style over comfort. When it comes to getting a new coat, new pants, pants or new gloves. There are two things that you need to be conscious of when you make the purchase. Number one, how warm is this going to keep me? And number two, how dry is this going to keep me? If the answer to either of those two things is, ooh, it, I might be kind of cold, but they look cool, or ooh, I might be kind of wet, but they look cool, then avoid those at all costs. Because at the end of the day, when you're freezing cold, when you're soaking wet, when you're miserable because your gear is not up to par, you're not gonna care how cool you look. You're just gonna be miserable. So make sure you prioritize staying warm and staying dry over everything else. And then once you determine that whatever outerwear you're looking at is going to keep you warm and dry, then you can worry about, okay, how stylish is this? Because there are plenty of brands that make stylish, warm, and dry stuff. You just have to do your research and make sure you're getting something that's going to accomplish all three of those things. All right, so number four ties directly into number three, and this is either getting a shell jacket or shell pants when you actually meant to get an insulated jacket or insulated pants. There's a big difference between these two, and there's generally a big price difference as well. With a shell, you're getting just the outer layer. It's probably going to be waterproof and windproof, but it's not going to be insulated and keep you really warm. With an insulated jacket or pants, you're getting the same shell that is waterproof and windproof, but you're also getting insulation underneath that shell that's going to help keep your body heat trapped inside. Either way you go, you can stay super comfortable, super warm, super dry. You just have to realize what it's gonna to take to do so. For example, I have a pair of shell pants and insulated pants. With my shell pants, I need compression pants and sweatpants and then my shells, and I stay nice and warm 
with my insulated pants, I just need the compression pants and basketball shorts, and generally that keeps me almost too warm. So there's a big difference. Realize that there's that difference. Realize the reason those pants you're looking at that look identical to that other pair of pants, but they're, they're $100 cheaper, it might be because of their shells. Number five is going to be make sure that underneath all this outerwear we've just talked about, you have the proper base layers. And what I would suggest for base layers is compression pants like Under Armour pants and a compression long sleeve shirt like an Under Armour shirt. From there, you can kind of layer up however you want, whether you want to do long sleeve thermals like this, whether you want to do uh, a crew neck sweatshirt, whatever you want to do is kind of up to you. But having that very first layer be tight and warm and keep that body heat real close to you, keeping your core as warm as possible will also help your extremities stay warm because your body won't be pulling in the blood to your core away from your extremities if the core is already warm. So the number one way and the easiest way to keep that core warm is to get proper base layers. So don't skimp on those. Mistake number six, moving on to the goggle world is purchasing goggles that don't come with a low light lens. Honestly, if you're buying goggles that don't automatically come with a low light lens and you're paying more than $100, you should probably not buy goggles from whatever company you're looking at because any goggle worth its snuff should come with a low light lens. I know the mirrored lenses would look super cool, you can get so many dope colors. I mean, everybody wants a cool mirror lens, myself included, but the fact of the matter is you cannot ski in all conditions with a dark mirrored lens made for sunlight. You can ski in all conditions with a low light lens. You know, if it's cloudy and snowy, low light lens. If you're riding at night under the lights, low light lens. If it's just super flat light, low light lens. Really the only times I use my mirrored lens is if it's a perfectly sunny bluebird. Keep that in mind when you go to buy goggles, please make sure they're coming with a low light lens. Riding in the dark with a mirrored lens is a recipe for disaster. It's going to make you not be able to see the bumps ahead of you in the snow. It's just dangerous, so make sure you get that low light lens. Number seven, this is a super easy one to, to get right but I know a lot of people probably have still gotten it wrong, is not getting a neck gaiter or some type of hood that can cover up your neck, your face, your nose, and can go under your helmet or your hat or whatever you're wearing. This is a super simple mistake to solve, but if you've never gone skiing or snowboarding before, then you might not even realize how nice it is to have one of those. And if you've never worn one and you have skied a lot, you still don't realize how nice it is to have one of those. If I forget my gator, I'm gonna be miserable for the entire day. So they're not expensive. You can get them for like 10 bucks. Just make sure you get one and you don't have to wear it all the time. If it's super warm, I'll take mine off. But on those cold days, I literally need it. So don't forget some type of neck something to keep your neck and face warm. All right, another mistake that I don't know if it's really a mistake or maybe a conscious decision that you make is spending a ton of money on a ski setup, outerwear, base layers, gloves, goggles, but not spending enough money on a helmet or maybe no money at all. Protecting your brain should be priority number one. If any piece of equipment, in my opinion, rivals the importance of properly fitting ski boots, it's a helmet that is rated high enough to protect you and keep your brain safe. I know a lot of people think, oh, they're not cool or, oh, I'm so good at this sport, I'm never gonna crash in a way that's gonna require a helmet. Freak things happen all the time. I've seen too many of these accidents happen for me to not suggest wearing a helmet. I'm always going to suggest wearing a helmet. I think everybody on the mountain should have a helmet on. And so if you're willing to spend all this money on the rest of your setup, you better damn be willing to spend some money on a helmet and just protect yourself. It's so simple. It's so easy. Nowadays, helmets are actually pretty stylish. I think helmets are more stylish than no helmets. So just please protect your dome and get a helmet. Mistake number nine, we're almost to the end, is spending more than like $20 on ski poles. I don't care if the ski salesman at your store tells you that these carbon fiber poles are gonna make you go 20 miles an hour faster, you're gonna be the coolest kid on the mountain, you're gonna be so much better at skiing with these poles, it's a lie. I have never once used a pair of ski poles, it doesn't matter if they're rentals, my dad's ski poles, the ancient freaking cross country ski poles that I use to this day, I have never gotten better at skiing because of my ski poles. That is for damn sure. So don't spend a ton of money on ski poles. If you really want ski poles that are a certain color or whatever, you can always just spray paint them. If you're spending $50 or more on a pair of ski poles, you're messing up. You're messing up. I just don't see why that would ever be necessary. They're poles, man. They're, they're not that important. They're poles. Unless you're like a ski racer or somebody competing and you need poles, don't spend 
more than $20 on ski poles, seriously. We've made it to the end. Our final point is don't spend $400 plus dollars on skis that are not really meant for the terrain that you're gonna be skiing the most during your season. If you are a Midwest skier like myself and you only plan on skiing Midwest mountains, then don't go out and buy powder skis for your Midwest mountain because not only will they probably be more expensive, but now you're hindering yourself because powder skis are built to ski in powder. If you want peak performance on just groomed regular Midwest trails, then they're not gonna be the best option out there. So do your research, do your due diligence, and make sure that the skis you're purchasing aren't a specific type of ski for a specific condition that you will never ride. Buy skis that are going to enhance the terrain you ride and not hinder you on the terrain you ride. So there it is, the list of 10 mistakes that a lot of skiers make when going to buy gear. Hopefully this video helps you and helps you save some money. If it did, leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video, guys. Peace.